watching Paint Dry. Today we're going to go over how you paint your walls. Now first of all, we've already prepped the room for painting, and we've already painted the ceiling. So if you want to see how to do those two things, you've got to see the video on prepping the room and painting the ceiling. Now that we're done with that, it's time to paint the walls. Now the ceiling is white, and the walls are going to be blue. So we're going to have to cut a straight line up against the ceiling. I'm going to show you how to do that and make it look really nice. First of all, let's go over some of the equipment you're going to want. I recommend a three and a half inch angled latex brush, same as we were using on the ceiling. Now you're going to need to spend 12, 15 bucks on a brush like this, but it's really worth it. It does a much better job than a cheap plastic handle brush that you get out of the bargain bin. Okay, it's going to give you a lot less streaking, it's going to hold a lot more paint, and it's much more stable. It makes it easier to cut lines. Okay, a lot of people think you need a small brush to cut a straight line. It's not true. A big brush actually works better. You're also going to need a cutting pot, of course, to put this brush in. I recommend you roll, as always, out of a five gallon bucket with a roller grid in it and a good stout handle roller. Don't buy the cheapy because it'll bend. Now the reason I like rolling out of the five gallon bucket is because roller pans are just too easy to step on. Now as far as your roller cover goes, for your average room you're probably going to want a half inch or a three eighths inch nap somewhere in there. And then, of course, you're going to need some kind of a stepladder, or I uh, like this little stool that doubles as a toolbox. Oh yeah, and one more thing you're going to want is a good roller pole. This is a two to four foot extendable metal roller pole. This is a good thing to have. Now, one thing that's very important before you get started is, if you're using a custom color, such as this blue, you've got to dump all your paint into one bucket and mix it around. They call that boxing the paint. Okay, so we've got our paint ready, we've got all our equipment, now we need to cut in the room. Here we go. Okay, so now we need to cut this line in up against the ceiling. Alright, so I've got my cutting pot here, maybe one quarter to one third full. I've got my brush, I dip the brush, and rather than wiping all the paint off on the edge, just give it a little shake. You want to leave a good amount of paint on there. You always want to make sure you're using enough paint. Now some people wonder how best to hold a paintbrush. I think this is the best way. You have your thumb on one side, you have your forefinger right there, and three fingers on that side. It gives you a lot of strength either way. It's kind of like holding a pencil. Start over here in the corner. And put a little paint on like that. Now notice I'm not, not trying to cut that line in yet up against the ceiling. I'm just getting a little paint down below. Because this will help me to glide smoothly when I actually am cutting that line in. Now, Here's how you make that line look straight. In this instance, I want to cut that paint just a hair up onto the ceiling. Okay? If I leave it down on the wall and I've got a little wavery white line down on the wall, that's going to be very visible from out in the middle of the room. But if I cut it just a hair up onto the ceiling from the middle of the room, you're not going to be able to tell. Now here's what I'm talking about. If you walk over the wall and you look straight up at the ceiling, yeah, you can see where the paint wavers a little bit unevenly out onto the ceiling. But as soon as you step back out into the room from where most people are going to be looking at it, it looks straight. Now here's the second point that I want to make about cutting in the room. It's very important that as you go along, you kind of use a two-step process you always put the paint on first, then you go back and do one final stroke to smooth everything out. And you always have to do that stroke back into your wet edge. That means back into the direction that you're coming from. If you always do that, your brush strokes will all blend together, and you're not going to get any marks where you started and went out that way. Okay, it's always going to blend together. Very important.
Okay, now I've got the room cut in and it's time to roll the walls. Now, you can get great results from your rolling if you just follow the simple two-step process. And that is, first you lay the paint on. You just get the whole wall covered. You get a good coat of paint on there. You don't worry about being too precise. You just make sure everything gets covered. Then you go back to the beginning and you do one final roller stroke on the whole wall to smooth it all out. I call that laying it off. All right? As long as you lay it on and lay it off, every time you paint a wall, it's going to look beautiful. Before you pull it out of there, twist it around a little bit so it doesn't drip. Need more paint. Make sure you apply some good pressure, get that paint evenly spread around. Notice how when I come out with a wet roller, I don't start right on top of what I've already painted. I kind of start out in the middle here and do a real light to kind of spread that fresh paint around a little bit, prevent it from getting heavy spots. And then you kind of work back into the area that you're coming from. How do you like the color? Okay, now I've got the paint laid on the whole wall. I'm going to go back to the beginning and put a nice smooth stroke into the whole wall. Make sure everything's even. There aren't any roller lines. Get in nice and tight to the edges. Get in up as close as I can to the ceiling without hitting it. And that's called my layoff. Bump that mop board. Go up real slow in the corner. And come down just like that. Move over. Overlap your roller strokes by maybe 30 to 50 percent. And get in nice and close to that trim. That's it. That's a beautiful looking wall. So now you know how to cut in and roll your walls and make everything look beautiful. Now the next step in painting this room will be to paint the trim. Of course you're going to want to go to my website, howtopaintahouseright.com, where you will find a video on painting the trim as well as a whole series of videos on interior and exterior painting and a lot of other helpful materials that I have put together to help you paint your house right.